Hello and welcome to my next tutorial. Today I'm going to be talking a bunch about uh, different development operation tools, uh, specifically Proxmux, Terraform, and Ansible are going to be the focus of this video and basically gluing all these tools together. Uh, so the goals of this video is take uh, Terraform to control a Proxmux server to launch a new Ubuntu uh, cloud init server and I'll kind of go into some of those details, what that means in a minute. Then once the virtual machine's uh, running, Ansible will take over after that. The next uh, goal is to be able to, to destroy and create the virtual machine in a loop and then have that entire process uh, continue to work and be able to test on this setup. So I've actually, a little bit background of this is I have this home lab. I have two Intel uh, nooks that are pretty old uh, running Proxmux 8.0.3 you certainly don't need two of them for this demo uh, you just need one so here in the background is my cluster and you can see CPU memory storage blah 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 and I'll kinda go into these setups here in a minute okay so the next thing I do is I immediately create a new virtual machine with a bunch of development operations tools on it. Ansible, Terraform, and Semaphore, which is basically just a... Uh, Semaphore is a Ansible front-end, website front-end for controlling playbooks. So it's just like an extra tool for uh, Ansible. Uh, the next thing we need to do is set up a virtual machine to clone from Terraform. So if you come to this website uh, here, it talks about how to set this up. And this got to be such a tedious process, I actually wrote a script to do this because there's actually a lot of other steps that are needed for this cloud in it to work. So if you come to this uh, TF examples, uh, repository you want to look at this create vm 9000 and basically this is going to create this virtual machine for you by running this on your primary proxmox server so i'm actually going to get that started right now so we're going to come here this bottom server is my primary proxmox server i'm going to do create vm 9000 and it's going to do a bunch of stuff here and I can kind of walk through what this is going to do. Um, if you put this file on the file system, it's smart enough not to re-download it, so that's kind of a feature I added to this script here. Otherwise, it'll get it from the website and takes a, a little bit longer to run. Basically, we're injecting a, this agent is important to be running. Uh, we also set a default username, a password, uh, it's up to you if you want to inject your public key from any of your devices into this image. Uh, personally, I don't have to do this step because Terraform will do it on the next step. Um, so I just leave those in this script in case you need it. In fact, I had some logic here. If you put this here, uh, it'll inject your uh, key here. So if you need that, you can use it. If not, just leave it commented out. Otherwise, let this run. Uh, basically enables uh, what type of hard drive. It says it's a cloud init server. This is so the console works in Proxmux. If you come here and look at the console, you want to set that. Um, I haven't had to mess with this one, but I set this to try to tell it has an agent on here. And when you use this Quemu, I don't know how to pronounce this, Q-E-M-U guest agent, uh, I usually set this, uh, and then this turns it into a template. So that's uh, all done running now. So if you come over here to Node 01, you'll have VM 9000 here. And this is all set up now for Terraform to take over. So I have this Terraform script called Reset VM. And basically what it's going to do is just destroy the old one and then create the new one in place. And I can actually demo that happening here. 
Uh, it's going to be called Testing O2. You can see it's already been launched there, so I want to be able to... TF reset VM. So now this will disappear. And then it sleeps a little bit and then it recreates that. And it'll be copying or cloning it off this VM9000. Okay, you can see it already came back. So I, I actually let this uh, run for about another 60 seconds even after this create VM uh, command finishes, just to let cloud init finish because there is quite a bit of startup stuff that runs on the on these VMs. So okay. So some other things that you're going to need to set up before calling this script is if you come in this TF examples, you need to come into these credentials auto TF vars dot sample file and remove this dot sample and put in your info here. So this points at your primary Proxmux server. This points uh, at the username and then you need a Proxmux API token. So make sure you update this file. The other thing you need to do is come into this full clone. And this is what controls most of what is going on with the Terraform apply command. But down at the bottom here, you want to put your public key, SSH key for your Ansible server down here. So in my example, when I called that reset VM script, this is all set up on my side. The other thing you want to look at is probably this entry here. This tells it what IP you want and what gateway it's going to use. For now, I have that commented out because I don't really know which uh, network you have, so it's up to you how you want to control that. So those are, those are two other entries you want to make sure you change. The rest of these you can change too, but just be careful. It might uh, break something if you don't have certain air. Like this is expecting this VM to clone off of, so you may get error messages if you don't use this correctly. Uh, this is the name of the device it's going to create and I just kind of copied this down. Uh, these VM IDs also have to be unique. If you don't, I actually put in here, if you reuse IDs you, you will get errors. Um, and that's kind of how Terraform launches um, a Proxmux device. So if we come back to the terminal, okay, this reset VM completed. So I can come back here and just make sure it's running. Okay, yeah, the screen arrow means it's running. And over here, you have op options to shut down and not start. So you know this is running. Okay, so the first thing I do now that the device is up is I make sure uh, my Ansible playbooks actually work from the terminal. And I do ping here. And this should be able to ping out the dot seven device. And you can see that worked fine. So if you come to this other Git uh, hub uh, repo, this is all my Ansible examples. So if you come in here to playbooks, you'll see ping. And this is the one we just ran. So I have a bunch of other playbooks in here that I can actually demo. Uh, now that I know this is running, I usually switch over to this semaphore dashboard. Uh, basically, this is a tool to uh, see, ha basically have uh, templates that will match your playbooks. So you, every time I have a new playbook that I want to run, I do new template here and put in all the information. So you can see, basically, these are one for one inside this playbooks uh, YAML files. Okay, so I always do these base packages as well, and this does basically, I can show you what that does in the, the Git repo. So if you come here, base packages, I just install a bunch of these 
tools that I always expect to see on my servers. Uh, I also make sure this uh, banner goes away. It's it's easier to SSH into these devices without that. Okay, um, some other playbooks that I've been testing is this install Apache and this install Samba. Both seem to work uh, pretty well. But that's kind of how I use Terraform and Proxmux and Ansible to control all these devices. Um, some other things that you run into when you're... Um, destroying and creating virtual machines a lot you'll run into where it gives you the the fingerprint problem and in order to fix that if you come into ansible examples and go to this ansible.cfg you'll see i add the a couple entries here to try to bypass these uh fingerprint check settings and all this stuff in fact i bet you here, I can show you what happens. Like, I'm sure if you've... So if I do Ubuntu at one... This is going to be a bad fingerprint. And this is what you usually get. And this would be bad if this was not a device that was just recreated. So usually you have to do key gen. And then... Yes and then you can go right back into this device. So that's kind of these keys that these commands help suppress th these warnings about these keys. Uh, the other thing you can do is, of course, put entries in your host file to ignore some of this stuff too. But um, it is also a security check, so you want to make sure you know what you're doing and why you're using these commands. Okay. Um, I can demo one more playbook. I will just show you like the Apache 2 here. So if I come here and just run this. And you can see what this playbook does going to Ansible examples, playbooks, install Apache 2. And this kind of does... Um, some advanced stuff it actually enables the ssl stuff i um it's nice having this set up here i'm going to keep working on this and probably keep changing this more and more okay so that's done and now this should work so if i go six eight that one that seven so this works here and also on HTTP. So that's how easy it is to install Apache on devices with all these tools. Uh, the last thing I just want to show you in Proxmux here is if you have any problems adding um, SMB storage here, so if you come here to storage and you go add SMB Sometimes you'll get an error message that says, like, the server is offline, error 500. All you have to do is uncheck this checkbox, click Add. Then it, the entry will work here in the dashboard, and then just double-click these and click this on, and it'll work. The other thing to note, too, is you can see all these different storage devices here, and it, these icons actually represent how much storage is left on the device. You can see this one I have here is pretty much full. This was an old Samba share I've had for a long time. If you see icons over here with like question marks or errors or problems here, chances are it cannot write to the folder that it's trying to access. So make sure you check permissions and, and all that stuff if you're creating Samba shares or other shares. Uh, they sh these icons should look like this and actually auto-detect. Uh, you can see these four drives basically have very little on them so far. And I just created this uh, setup yesterday. So yeah, that's uh, just another quick tip on how to manage some Samba SMB shares. If you have any comments or questions, uh, please post them below. And thanks for watching.